Hey, Stewart's Chapel, this is Don Pearson and Don Kent's. We're at the church office and we're at Mary Jo's desk. Now, it's a Tuesday when we're filming. This is Wednesday's devotion. And this is normal for Mary Jo when she comes in. I fill her desk with notes of things that she has to do. I put her to work on Wednesdays. I invaded her territory for this devotion. Second, no, I'm sorry. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, 17, and 18. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I, I've shared with you yesterday the things that my wife and I intentionally did in order to put the presence of God and the Word of God in the life of our children. But there was something else that we did. I actually started when they were just infants. They don't even know about it, where we would take them and lift them up to the Lord and pray over them. When they were Not just when they were sick and hurting, but as a regular thing, praying the same prayer over and over again. May our seed and our seed seed be found faithful unto you until you come. As time went on, especially during the years in Belize, the laying on hands, the, the touching and praying became the norm. We had a lot of mission teams that would come to Belize that we would help get, get ready and work with and send. And my kids would go with us on most of them. They would serve alongside. And then every Friday, because they usually left on Saturday and prayer, every Friday night, we would gather in a place where we, as a family, would go around and the four of us would lay our hands on each individual from the team and we would pray over them. Almost without exception, the group leader would say, we want to do that to you. Those were holy, sacred moments. We would move our places into the center of that circle and they would gather around us and they would lay on their hands on us and they prayed for us for almost seven years that happened not every friday but 20 to 30 40 weeks out of the year other missionaries would pray over us and we would pray over them whenever we had our regular missionary meetings laying on the hands of our children and praying over them and them laying their hands on us and praying over us and other people laying their hands on us and praying over us became the norm. And then we came back to the United States and we went through a dry, dry period. You see, that's not the norm. When I became the prayer strategist for the convention, I did my very best to do that with the pastors and their families as I was in their churches and with them. I would do it in associational meetings and call to prayers and psalm assemblies to stress the importance of touch and prayer, the prayer with presence. Then God led me here to Stewart's Chapel. And every Sunday morning, every Sunday morning, I lay and kneel on my face in front of the Lord's Supper table. And men come and bow and kneel and lay their hands on me and pray over me. Those are sacred, sacred times. When I'm done with these divest oceans, I have a family visit to make. I can tell you what's going to happen when I get ready to leave. I will lay my hands on that family and I will pray over them. Is that part of your life? Does it come natural? Where all of a sudden you can just stop and pray or are you terrified? when you come to prayer. Can you ever think of you doing that with your wife? No, I'm not talking about it at supper time. I'm talking about where you intentionally
pray over her or your husband, your children, not just in bad days, not just when you're afraid. Is it such a normal part of your family and of your life that you do it instinctively? That you would feel like you were starving if it stopped? You know how to change that, don't you? Start doing it. Love you, Stuart Chapel.